Sabine, I think you'd agree that most physicists would agree with uh, Vigna's famous article about the unreasonable effectiveness of mathematics, uh, but maybe you do not agree that the effectiveness of mathematics is all that unreasonable. No, I do not think that it is all that unreasonable that mathematics is effective in the natural sciences. Um, because what is mathematics about? It is um, a way to describe patterns, to describe regularities, and that's exactly what we do in the natural sciences. So there, there is, of course, an underlying question here, which is why is the universe such that there are patterns <laughs> for us to discover to begin with? And uh, I think that that's, that's a question which just falls outside of science. Um, so, so that in and by itself is not a question that belongs into uh, my discipline. Um, personally, I think that the more interesting question is why is mathematics so inefficient <laughs> in the other sciences? Like if you look at social sciences, uh, for example, or uh, maybe also at um, neurobiology and related disciplines, there's a very little mathematics that is actually being used. I mean, if you, I say that as a theoretical physicist. Um, so in, in physics, all our theories are mathematical. Um, but uh, that's not the case in other disciplines, which brings up the question uh, whether that is a property of nature. Um, is there just um, a limit to what we can do with mathematics? Or is it just a case of we have not yet found the right mathematics? Well, I think in the latter category, in trying to explain these larger phenomena, biology and psychology and then sociology, you have a multiplicity of, of variables, which you don't have at the physics level. If you're a reductionist, then you have everything in, in neurobiology composed of the physics, and you have sort of a factorial relationship among all these prob probabilistic things. You, you have just a, a hugely unwieldy uh, uh, universe to apply mathematics. So, But I, th I think there's a deeper question, and I agree with you that mathematics uh, uh, is a, a way to describe patterns. Uh, that's correct. But the question comes up: Why are why are the why are the patterns in nature you, you're putting aside? Okay, but there's, a, there's an intermediary question: Is that why are the patterns in nature such that many of them have a a, a unity of specificity, and they're not like the square root of two or pi that can go on forever? But uh, whether it's uh, uh, Newton's inverse square law, or whether it's the Maxwell's equations or Einstein's general relativity, these are kind of whole number relationships and are whole relationships that, uh, that, that describe the patterns. So it's not a question that there are patterns, but there are patterns that are susceptible to very simple mathematics. I, I find that unusual or disturbing. Well, again, you could argue that maybe we have only been able to find the patterns that we can describe with simple mathematics. Oh, okay, and, and that's a fair comment, but they are the big questions. They're the question of gravitation and, uh, and the, uh, the, the wave function in, in quantum mechanics. I mean, these are, these are fundamental kinds of questions, and they're all pretty simple equations. Yeah, the, the equations are pretty simple, but the problems that we're trying to solve are not. Um, so um, I'm not sure what, what you're trying to get at here if uh, you're trying to say that uh, maybe the answer to these questions are just not um, approachable with mathematics. I, I, I don't think that um, that is likely to be the case. I think that these are questions that mathematics can very well answer. We just have not found the answer. On the other hand, if you think about the many parameter systems like human beings or uh, societies and so on, this um, creates a big problem for um, the scientific method and um, the use of mathematics because um, it's just not possible to test such a system under sufficiently many circumstances. Completely agree. So, I, I, and, and then there's the question, what do you do? You know, will you ever be able to actually understand what human societies do, for example. Well, I think that's the question. Can you deeply understand something without using mathematics? 
And I would tend to think that, yes, you can. If you can use mathematics, that would give you maybe more certainty in your predictability or something. But um, that doesn't mean if you can't use math mathematics like an art appreciation or something, uh, that, that that makes it less real or less, uh, uh, less, you're less able to get some kind of truths. I think the question of patterns, though, in, in the deep physical reality is still a problem to me because I, I don't know why any, any of the fundamental aspects of reality should uh, submit themselves to simple mathematics unless there was some deeper kind of relationship, which is why the unreasonable effectiveness uh, resonates with me. I'm, I'm always afraid that in the end, that kind of discussion will just uh, lead to some anthropic statement of the sort that uh, if those laws would not be so simple, then we would not be here and we would not have been able to find them, which ultimately does not explain anything. Um, so uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure that that's a fruitful direction to even think about. I'm not sure an anthropic answer, answer would, would, would undermine the point because, may, because we, could, we could discover that the, uh, the, uh, the, the Einstein's uh, general relativity had, had uh, 20 different term, 50 different terms like the standard model or something that in order to, and then it still wouldn't be perfect. It would be, it would be perfect up to you know, 10 digits, but it wouldn't be perfect beyond that unless you extended it. So that would describe a pattern in mathematics, but it would be extremely unwieldy. And, and that's not what we have. We have a very simple description. And that's the unreasonable nature. So not, no, not that, I, I, don't, I don't think that's the case. So you can certainly extend Einstein's theory of general relativity with 20 more parameters. Um, people have done that. Um, there are, for example, the brown sticker theories. Uh, that's one example um, where you have additional parameters that modify Einstein's equations. Um, it's just that for all we currently know, those parameters are either zero or they are so small that uh, the effects are not observable. For all we currently know, these additional terms are, uh, the parameters in front of them are either zero or they are very small. Um, and uh, why that is so, we don't know, but it is something that we can just experimentally test. So um, I'm afraid that um, I see myself not so much in the business of trying to understand why those laws are the specific laws um, that describe the universe, but more concerned with the question, does it work? And uh, for me, if you can measure a constant and you find it to be negligible, negligibly small, um, that's all fine. That, that's how science works.